Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again, and this is an urgent video, a huge update just dropped for Counter-Strike 2. In a nutshell, they've added a whole bunch of new stuff that I've been talking about for the past year. I won't hold you up too long, so while you have time, check out Skins Monkey. Use code GABEN and get up to a $5 bonus. Select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range, and exchange your old and ugly CSGO items to something new and shiny from Counter-Strike 2. Use Use code GABEN and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. This new update is called the Armory. It seems like instead of operations, we're going to be getting regular battle passes now. The Armory Pass costs about 16 bucks, and with your purchase, you get one star as a gift. You can earn a total of 40 stars, and you can activate multiple passes and level them up at the same time. To earn stars, you just have to play, get experience, and level up. Basically, it's just a grind instead of the missions we had in operations. You use the stars to buy cosmetics, and this time the developers have really gone all out. The most important thing is definitely the keychains. I've been talking about them for years, and every time people yelled at me that I was making stuff up and they would never be added in CS. Well, they've added two whole capsules, each with 17 keychains. One capsule has sausage dudes, the other has various weapons. Each keychain has its own rarity, and some of them have special finishes like glitter, holographic, or metallic. All the keychains have small elements that change color, basically patterns. By default, keychains use the standard sticker positions, but if you want, you can attach them to almost any part of the weapon. The keychain physics interact with the player's hands, so if you hang a keychain too close to your fingers, they will constantly shake and bump due to hand movements when reloading or inspecting. And of course, you can create some really interesting combinations of keychains and stickers. Keychains can be exchanged and sold on the marketplace, and to remove them from a weapon, you need to buy a separate item for $1. When used, the keychain returns back to your inventory, and can be reused an infinite number of times. And the strangest thing is that you can hang keychains on the bomb. The second interesting new feature is the limited edition deagle. Basically, it's a reimagining of the case hardened skin. Each player will have their own unique pattern that can be unlocked for 25 stars. The activation time is limited, and after 100 days, the skin will become unavailable. If it turns out that some patterns are completely blue, combined with the limited amount of time, this skin could become one of the most expensive items in the game. Of course, they added three new collections, Overpass, Graffiti, Sports, and a new case called Gallery. I'm not a big fan of skins, but it's worth noting the new type of finishes with Glitter. And finally, two sets of stickers for all sorts of crafting. It's important to note that these are the first stickers from Valve themselves in a long time. Overall, they're all pretty funny, and the developers have finally decided to make lenticular stickers. In terms of gameplay updates, it's worth noting the long-awaited addition of Italy to the competitive map pool, with the ability to get a rank. They've also updated the character animations, fixing the behavior of the legs. Previously, when starting to move, the legs would start faster than the player, which could cause opponents to notice you before your body even appeared. Big thanks to Al and Jackie for a nice demonstration. It's also worth noting the update to the netcode. Now the game more accurately identifies network problems and only takes into account those errors that actually affect the gameplay. This will help make the game smoother and more enjoyable, avoiding weird freezes and lags even if you don't have a perfect internet connection. And there are a whole bunch of various fixes and changes to the maps. Among the unannounced changes, it is worth noting the change in localization from Operation Rewards to Just Rewards, which may mean the end of the concept of operations, and in the future we will only receive battle passes. In the files with sound events, there were mentions of DE Train, but interestingly the file mentions the sounds of a thunderstorm, which already existed in the game earlier. In addition, in the list of changes, the developers mentioned the possibility of a wetness effect on the necessary surfaces. Considering the train still hasn't been added, even after showing footage in the trailer, it can be assumed that the developers decided to completely rework the map, and the mention of thunder and thunderstorms is not a coincidence. Maybe we'll see new weather effects. Speaking of remakes, the textures of the snowy cobblestone, which we found almost a year ago, have completely disappeared from the game. Judging by the leaks, we will see a full-fledged remake of this map in the future, but for now, the developers are simply covering their tracks. In addition, there are a whole bunch of leaks related to future Valve games, in particular the new Half-Life, so expect a new video analyzing all the interesting things in the near future.
leave a dollar emoji in the comments if you watched until this moment and check out my previous video.